Before we get started, I have a big announcement. My fairy fantasy novel, The Ghosts of Nothing, is now available as an audiobook on Amazon, Audible, and iTunes. So if you prefer listening to your books, you can pick up a copy now. The Ghosts of Nothing is a spooky fantasy about a girl from a haunted town that turns out to have more of a fairy problem than a ghost problem. It's a magical, shivery read, and it's been getting great reviews. So if you've been thinking about getting it, it's a great time now. Check it out. There are fairies on the farm. This happened in England, Dorset, on a farm near a small village. The sun was coming down, and the sunset was spectacular. I was up the farm doing the jobs, feeding the birds, checking the enclosures, driving birds in and shutting them up for the night, on my own. I would have been 9, 10, 11, that sort of age, late primary. I was unhappy, which wasn't unusual. The sunset looked like a bright world hanging in the sky, and I looked at it and wished for escape. And instead of looking away, I carried on looking, until I noticed a bright light, which was moving down from the sky. As it got closer, I realized it wasn't a light, but a sort of elaborate hot air balloon contraption full of tall, elegant, bejeweled beings with peacock blue skin and shimmering golden hair. The balloon was coming straight for me. Soon it landed on the grass not far from where I was standing. At this point, there seemed to be two realities playing out at once. I was talking to the beings. I went into the balloon basket with them, even though I knew I shouldn't. You see, I was a well-read child. I'd read my Nesbitt and my Fargen, so I knew exactly the risks of interacting with beings like this. But I didn't care. They were so beautiful and alluring. Tall, slender, hair shades of gold, clothing long robes in dense, bright colors with an iridescent sheen, scattered with pearly jewels, small gems that sparkled. And they had peacock blue skin with an iridescent sheen to it. They kept their expressions quite muted and spoke without moving their eyes. They looked amused, aloof, interested and speculative all at once, and they moved with a sort of painful grace. At the same time, as I was transfixed on these beings, I had an awareness, like a shadow, of myself standing still in the field as the sun went down. The quality of the experience was not like a daydream, more like a really loud noise coming from somewhere else that drowned out everything else. It's hard to explain. There was music, but it was like a single glorious chord playing really loudly and continuously, which made it hard to think and kept me focused on the experience. The memory of that noise itself is weirdly compelling. I remember there was a suggestion that the beings had been summoned in response to my original wish of a single proper escape or the ability to escape whenever I wanted. They offered me a choice to escape with them or remain. I took the second choice. I felt myself returned to the field, although a part of me was still standing there. Another part of me was climbing down towards my body via a pretty rope ladder which was hanging down from the craft, now hovering in the air above. Then the balloon craft thing flew back into the last threads of the sunset, 
becoming a light at first, and then nothing. As I grew up, I did have other strange experiences, but nothing with the absolute elaborate beauty, grandeur, and narrative compulsion of this experience. Now, as an adult, I feel the weird compulsion both to share this story and to keep it a secret, which is a very odd thing. Eventually, I wrote up a slightly elaborated version for a free writing exercise at school. While I was writing it, the same sense of harmonious uh, compulsion came over me, and I was unable to stop writing until the end of the story. I even wrote straight through my break and into part of the next lesson. In my teens, when I did some research into similar experiences, I did notice some similarities between my experience and some alien abduction accounts. But I think mine was essentially a fairy experience because it happened in response to a wish. It involved a transaction. The experience was one of joyful compulsion, and it was marked with music, beauty, and wonder. Also, it answered a need. People in the local village did speak of strange things happening in the area and the specific field where the incident occurred. What are fairies? I genuinely don't know. But I think my experience was both important to me developmentally and helped me manage things in my life at the time, which might otherwise have been much more difficult. So, in a way, I owe them. When I was about four and a half to about five years old, I was visited by a strange being in the middle of the night. I remember one night I was playing with the shadows on my walls while lying in bed when I felt the urge to look up. In the corner of my room, I saw this man. He was super tall, I'd say six to seven feet, pale skinned, Shaved head, black top hat, long black jacket with a gold watch and chain, and he held a wooden staff. He tipped his hat to me and approached my bed. I was unable to move or scream. He took my hands in one of his and sprinkled this blue fairy-like dust into my eyes. And then I don't remember anything else. The next day, I told my mom the Sandman came to visit me at night, but she didn't believe me and just thought I had an overactive imagination. He came to see me several more times, and the visits were always the same as the first. He never spoke or said why he was there. I'm currently 33, and to this day, I wonder about him. Exactly who or what was he? And what was he doing there? What was that blue fairy dust sprinkled into my eyes? I like to think fairies are connected to nature spirits and live on a different vibrational plane of existence to us humans. Recently, I asked about this unusual visitor during a hypnosis session. My subconscious wouldn't provide a straight answer but I was told this being was from another dimension and had been observing me for a while. My subconscious said he was there to interfere with my ability to see beyond the veil. I am currently listening to your video titled Fairies in the Family, and the story of the blue boy in the window reminded me of something that has stayed with me for years. When I was younger, no older than maybe five, I was living in San Diego. One night, my sister and I were sleeping on the floor of our bedroom as a little campout situation with blankets and pillows making a fort. The door to our room was open so the hall light could enter the room. 
we were both afraid of being upstairs by ourselves because we always said there was something up there. As the eldest sibling, I slept in front of the fort's entryway so my sister could be out of the line of sight of whatever was out there and sleep comfortably. At some point during the night, I woke up to a giggling sound coming from outside in the hallway. When I turned over, I saw a blue boy. His skin was an electric blue, and I remember a glowing blue kind of aura surrounding him. He looked a few years older than I was at the time, but the other details of his appearance may have been muddled over the years. He was peeking at me from around the staircase, which was visible from my bedroom. He poked his head out, looked at me, saw me looking at him, giggled, and then ducked his head back behind the staircase. He did this several times, repeating. I was too petrified to move or react in any way. After this experience, I remember I started having dreams or something similar where I would step out of my body and roam the house, and sometimes I would see the boy. Maybe they were out-of-body experiences, I don't know. We never talked to each other, but I remember he would continue the same game of hiding behind something, peeking at me, and laughing. It's been years since this happened, I'm 26 now, but I remember being so terrified of this boy at the time because I did not know what he was, and I thought he was laughing at me, and delighted in me being scared. Now that I'm older and have had a few more similar experiences, I think he was just trying to play or maybe wanted attention. We moved out of that house not long after for unrelated reasons, and I never saw him again. It wasn't until a few years ago that I remembered him. I think it was during a round of sharing odd encounters with friends when I suddenly remembered this experience, and all of the encounters I had with him just came rushing back. I have no idea what he was but I wish I knew. This incident happened to a friend of mine at a house party in Yorkshire. The house is Victorian and known to be haunted, and also located near several Norse, Celtic, and Roman sites. The party was in full swing and eventually moved out into the garden for a pagan ceremony, light-hearted. There, several people noticed a blue thing, and upon closer inspection, found out that it appeared to be a fairy. A tiny, naked, winged boy with blue skin. He was hovering in the thick trees and shrubs, just playfully. He was tiny, youthful, blue-skinned, male, with wings and a mop of hair. There was a light humming that accompanied his movements, similar to insects, as well as eerie giggles. At least six sober adults witnessed this, and some took photos. It was around 9 to 10 p.m., on one of the photos which I've seen, the fairy is quite clear. He appears around four inches in height, and although blurred due to movements, is clearly not any type of insect. The only reason the stories and photos are not public is because the members of the group work in education, the justice system, and other public offices, and they're afraid of the repercussions that might follow from various angles. My friend who witnessed this is educated in British folklore, and so assumed it was a fairy. I believe him completely, and all the other witnesses are credible, educated people.
I saw something when I was 14, but I was never sure what it was or how to classify it. But nevertheless, here's the story you can have. It was about the year 1984. I was 14 and my best friend was 12. I was spending the night at her house and we were very bored. I noticed the house next door had these very large windows and no curtains. It was one of those old white farmhouses. It was dark outside, and I told her it would be funny to spy on her neighbors. There were two sisters that lived there, and one was also a friend to my friend. With the lights off in our bedroom, we could see easily into the sisters' bedroom. They were in their nightgowns, just meandering about the room, getting ready for bed, I suppose. We thought we were so funny, sitting there spying through the window. But then something happened that wiped the smirks from our faces. In the bedroom where the sisters stood, a bright, glowing, neon blue, very tall, very slender, female form appeared and walked right across the room and into the wall where she vanished. I said, did you see that? Now, honestly, I believed at that point that somehow I had imagined it, and had my friend said no, I would have forgotten this incident. But my friend said, yes. She saw what I saw. So I knew it was real. I knew I hadn't imagined it. It was as real as real could be. The girls in the room in the other house didn't appear to be aware of what happened. They didn't see the female form. They didn't see anything unusual. My friend asked one of these girls at school about it the next day, and her reply was, No, you're scaring me. Also, the being didn't know it had been seen as far as I could tell. At that age, and only knowing Christian beliefs at the time, I believed that God played a trick on us to punish us for spying. To say the least, we never spied again. But I now believe what we saw was a kind of supernatural being, possibly a fairy, but I'm not sure. Are there any fae that glow blue? I guess it could have been something else, but sometimes I think fairies, ghosts, various entities are basically all the same thing. Beings that exist in another space. To start, I want to say I'm not entirely positive my experience was with the Fae, but I really tried looking at every other possibility and couldn't find another explanation that made sense. It happened in Louisiana. It was around 11 p.m. There were four tornadoes near my house, so me and my family were all taking shelter. We lost power due to the storm, so it was pitch black in and around our home. After the tornadoes had passed, my boyfriend and I ended up going back into our house at some point, which is a tiny house in the backyard of my family home. We didn't have anything else to do, so we were watching the lightning storm through the windows. We were mesmerized by how pitch black it was one second, and how the next second, everything was lit up like daytime. But then... As I was staring out the window, I saw something flashing in the yard. I asked my boyfriend if he could see it. At first he couldn't, but after a few seconds, he saw it. It was so strange, like nothing we'd ever seen before. He's from New Zealand and has seen the glowworm caves. And I'm from the States and have seen lightning bugs all my life. But this flashing thing in the yard was definitely not one of those two. At first, it would flicker this bright blue light. It seemed to be responding almost to the lightning. Then suddenly, two of these 
lights appeared, and then three. We were so confused and we were wondering if we were just seeing things. I ended up calling my dad and asked him to look out the window and describe what he could see. Both he and my sister came over and both described exactly what we were seeing. None of us could figure out what these things were. I wanted to go outside and get a better look at them, but it was raining hard and the lightning was close to our house. I tried looking up what it could be, but I couldn't find anything that matched the description. The next day, each of us went out to the area where we'd seen these glowing lights and there wasn't anything there but grass and wild strawberries. I really tried to be logical about this, but I couldn't find anything that sounds remotely close to what we all saw. I've been going through a spiritual journey in the past two years of my life and have recently declared myself a witch. Within the last couple of weeks, I've been researching the Fae and have considered working with them in my magic. I know that whatever we saw really might not be fairies, but I do know that the Fae are said to twinkle or flash lights. I've heard stories of them presenting in a bright bluish white light as well. Who knows, maybe I'm jumping to conclusions, but I decided it wouldn't hurt to share my story. It was a small flashing light that was one to two inches initially, and then several. And there just isn't any rational explanation for them. I think fairies are nature spirits that can manifest physically in different ways. They're playful, and some can be mischievous. I know in some cases, the Fae may use different tactics to lure people to them. I wonder if my experience was some sort of lure. I certainly wanted to go out there. While walking in the woods in Scotland, a bright light appeared around 50 centimeters away. It was level with my head and hovered there. It came from above to the right. When I was able to focus my eyes, I saw that it was a fairy, made of dazzling blue and white light that blazed like fire. Although made of light, she was very defined. The wings were large and flapped, she hovered in the same spot right in front of me for, I'd say, about 20 seconds. I could tell it was a female from her shape and long hair. The size was approximately 20 centimeters in body length, but the wingspan was around 60 centimeters. During this experience, I felt very positive and happy when the light shone upon me. After it left, I felt a little dazed and in disbelief. I remember in the moment when I saw her, the birds were singing very loudly. I think she was a fairy because of her size and appearance, and the fact that she appeared to live in the woods and was some kind of nature spirit. I think there are many different types of fairies, from spirits of the ancient dead who reside in the hills to nature spirits from another realm who reside in the woods and have connections to plants and their environment. But I don't know what they are, really. I just know what I saw and what I've read from folklore. Thanks for watching, and thanks to all those who submitted their stories for this one. As I mentioned in the opening, my fairy fantasy novel, The Ghosts of Nothing, is now available as an audiobook. So if you love listening to your books, you can now pick up a copy at Audible, Amazon, and iTunes. 
for those who haven't read it, The Ghost of Nothing is a spooky fairy fantasy novel about a girl from a haunted town, but as the girl will quickly discover, and hopefully you, the mysterious events in town have more to do with fairies than ghosts. It's a haunting adventure. It has a beautiful and frightening fairy world, a unique magic system, and I think if you like this channel, if you love fairies, mysteries, and magic, you will really have fun reading or listening to this book. Um, though I did not narrate the audiobook, it has a very wonderful narrator, a very talented audiobook narrator who does all sorts of voices and accents, and I just think he did a really wonderful job. You can listen to a sample on Audible, iTunes, or Amazon first to see if you like the performance uh, before committing. So I encourage you to check it out. And if you do pick up an audio copy, please don't forget to leave me a review. Reviews are just so helpful for authors. And if you've read it, of course, please leave me a review on Amazon. Thank you so much. If you have a fairy story experience to share, please check out my website at scaryfairygodmother.com, link in the description. It has a spot where you can submit your stories, comments, questions, or suggestions. And you can also sign up for my mailing list there, Fairy Lights. Extra special thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon and to anyone who joined the channel or made a one-time donation through PayPal or Coffee. I really appreciate you guys so, so much and the support you are given this work. If you like this content and would like to support it, please check out my Patreon page and the other support options in the description below. The stories in this video came courtesy of subscribers and the fairy census, so thanks again to everybody who submitted. The stories were edited for dramatic and narration reasons. To read the original census stories, follow the link in the description. Please leave a comment below, like, share, and subscribe if you're new. It really helps the channel when you do that, and hit the bell to receive notifications of new videos. And until next time, this has been a visit from your scary fairy godmother.